This wasn't Baltimore's Inner Harbor, but Boston's Charles River. And we come here to meet two poly grads, the 2017 Distinguished Alumni Honorees. Brothers who were Baltimore bred and both at the top of their game. One teaches law at the one and only Harvard University. He is Michael Klarman, a civil rights scholar with degrees from Oxford and Stanford with a half a dozen books in print. And the other is based in downtown Boston. He is Seth Klarman, a hedge fund manager who is tremendously respected by Wall Street. Great to meet you guys. Yeah, nice to meet you too. My name is Elijah Dukes, and I'm in the class 2018, a junior at Poly currently. Yeah, and I'm Isaac Spokes, also class of 2018, and we're both junior. Yeah. Mike Klarman, 1976 Poly. And Seth Klarman, 75. This is the first time in Poly's history that the Alumni Association has uh, honored two brothers as our distinguished alumni. So we're going to ask you a bunch of really quick questions, and I have these paddles here for you. And so if you think that the answer to the question applies to you, you raise your paddle. So let's get started. Who's the fastest? <laughs> Who's the funniest? Okay. <laughs> Who got the higher SAT score? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can figure that out. I got a higher SAT score. You have a higher oh, you, math you score. You got a higher verbal, I got a higher math. Yeah. Now a little bit of a trick question here. Who went to the best high school? <laughs> so you guys have impressive resumes. So your parents must have raised really great sons. What values did they instill in you when you were young? I think they cared a lot about education and they cared a lot about working hard. I think also of respect for others. They went out of their way to support their schools and important causes to them. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about Baltimore. What makes Baltimore special to you? I became a baseball fan in Baltimore. Um, I became a fan of horse racing because of Baltimore. I became an entrepreneur because of Baltimore. So it was, it was a great place to uh, to grow up for me. What was your favorite memory at Poly? I remember a bunch of teachers. When I think back about it, I actually remember more teachers from Poly than I do from Penn. So Bonnie Erickson was a great history teacher. Barb Strickland was a, um, a fabulous chemistry teacher. Uh, we had a math teacher named, uh, was it Irvin Yaffe? Is Irvin that his Yaffe, name? Yeah. Uh, I had a geometry teacher named James Newton, uh, who moved on, I think, to teach at the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. Why is philanthropy important to you, and why is it important to keep giving back to Poly like you both do? It is a time of great inequality, and not everybody has the same opportunity. And those of us who are doing well have a profound obligation. You know, we kind of all, all um, are, are rowing in the same boat, and we need to make sure everybody's taken care of that, that is in the country. And so I think it's a, it's a profound obligation that, that I feel deeply, and my wife feels deeply. I think we both believe that everything in life is a kind of balance and you want to enjoy yourself, but you also want to look back at the end of your life and say, what did I do to make the world a better place? Mm -hmm. And it's not one or the other, it's both, but I think life isn't just about having fun and achieving things for yourself, it's also about trying to help others and, and make the world a better place. Uh, how do you feel that you became such a successful person and that people trust you as a source of advice? You only can build a successful firm with a tremendous amount of hard work, surrounding yourself with fantastic people. I've been really blessed to be able to do that, mm -hmm. delegating a lot of responsibility to those people, and having a firm culture and values um, of putting the clients first, which is something we've prided ourselves on from day one. We, we actually weren't, didn't form our business to make a profit. We formed our business to steward the client's capital, and yes, we make a profit, but that was not the intention of the firm. The intention was the clients helped to start the business because they wanted their capital managed well. So it's a, it's a, great, a great vision that's come, in, come to fruition over 35 years. What we want to know is what kind of books do you like to read? My whole life I've, I've been a reader and I think it, it, there are probably multiple reasons, but I'm curious. I want to know how things work. Mm -hmm. And even more importantly, I want to know what's going to happen. And what's going to happen is often related to what has happened. I read history, I read psychology, I read finance and business, I read a lot of biography. I'm drawn to anything that makes me a better person, makes me a better investor, makes me a better philanthropist, or just makes me more knowledgeable about the world. So there's this great phrase, to whom much is given, much is required. What do you think are the current responsibilities of poly students? 
think everybody's responsibility is to engage in some sort of balance in their life and to have fun and do well for their family and be successful, but also to try to think about helping other people who are less advantaged and try to leave the world a better place than it was when, when you entered it. And I think you want to look back at the end of your life and say not only that I had a fun, successful, um, rewarding life, but also that you know I can point to things that are better because of me. I can point to students who I think I help promote their careers and they're going to do great things in the world. And Seth can point to a million different philanthropic things that he did to make the world a better place. And I think that's everybody's obligation. So speaking about being a law professor, uh, you're a law professor at Harvard, which is pretty amazing. So you get to shape minds that will go on and shape the country. What do you think is the greatest gift that you as a teacher could give to a student? I think the greatest gift any a uh, teacher can give to a student is to make them passionate about, about ideas and naturally that'll be the ideas that you're talking about in class. So I tell my students the first day in class I want to give them a way of thinking about the Supreme Court and its role in American society and the relationship between courts and social change. I want to give them a way of thinking about that we'll, that will stick with them for the rest of their lives. Well, this was a pretty enlightening experience for us. I know Isaac enjoyed it as much as me, hopefully. So, <laughs> thank you guys for meeting with us today. Baltimore boys, now pledging allegiance to Boston. But even as Red Sox Nation converts, they are still Polly proud. Yes. Well, you, you should join in if you get the sense of it. Okay. Polly, Polytechnic, Polly boys are we. <laughs> as we go marching, on to victory, da 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 da, -da. we are out to win, boys. Beat City's team, we're gonna fight, fight for Polly, da 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 da, -da, -da, -da. A very clever song. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing it, how that sticks it in was, your head? I think it was the Lin-Manuel of his day.